Welcome back all. I hope you had a good lunch break and I hope you enjoyed the musical session by Beats by Girls. I want to thank them again. Now, we'll be picking up themes and highlights discussed in the morning. This session, titled Sharing of Experiences and Case Studies of Regional Initiatives, will provide an insight into experiences and examples um, of work from Turkey, Georgia and Serbia. We will explore themes and, um, and highlights discussed in the morning via local, national and regional initiatives. For that, I have a distinguished panel of speakers and I want to announce them one by one if they can kindly make it to the stage. Dr. Arman Demir, lecturer and researcher at Bashkent University, Creative Industries Research Center. Please. Merhaba. Evet, Elena Toitze, Head of Creative Industries Division, Creative Georgia. <laughs> Ralja Bobic, Program Director at Serbian Games Association and co-founder at Nova Iskra. <laughs> I hope I pronounced your names correctly. correctly. I'm very sure about your name here, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Okay, now, um, why don't we start with you? Perhaps, um, could you please provide an overview of the cultural and creative industries in Georgia today? Yeah, may I, may I use the pointer and my yes, presentation? Please. It will help yeah. me a lot and in this, yeah. <laughs> if I may. There it is. Okay, so, uh, is it on? Um, I am guessing it is not on at the moment, but could you please, yes. Just a moment. Okay, uh, before I'll just introduce myself. Sure. I'm Elena Toidze, as already said. I'm representing Creative Georgia, that is a semi-governmental agency from Georgia, from my country, that has been established with the main goal to support creative industries, creative economy developments in my country. So, uh, before I go into the details of the presentation, I will start with a brief overview of the, the sector. So. Uh, just uh, the process, everything like creative industries related in Georgia started like in 2016. That's the time when uh, cultural uh, strategy, first ever national cultural strategy has been adopted in my country. And one of the main priorities and the goals of this strategy was to support creative industries. And then after this, our organization has been founded in 2017. And when we started like this was the environment. On the uh, left side, you see the overall strengths of the uh, creative industry sector in Georgia. The cultural scene is really vibrant and diverse, and uh, we have a rich and unique cultural heritage, like intangible cultural heritage and tangible cultural heritage as well. We have like rapidly developing fashion design, electronic music, advertising sectors, and Tbilisi, the capital city of Georgia, is the cultural center of regional importance, and we have the cultural policy in place and we have the special agency dedicated to support creative industries and uh, you see the weaknesses this was the environment we had to start operating in in 2017 when we started working in creative georgia uh, low awareness about the sector about the potential of creative industries lack of entrepreneurship uh, and digital related skills lack of networking and know-how sharing lack of funding mechanisms and lack of sectoral research and data. And the last point was like the prerequisite for most of the weaknesses and challenges we faced in the sector because like we didn't have the data and evidence. So this brings me to the next point. So uh, have you ever discovered yourself like in a situation when you try to persuade like uh, decision makers? for instance, decision makers from other areas like Ministry of Finance about the importance of creative industries. And you are trying your best, but uh, you can succeed because like the shiny and like uh, eye-catching statistics of the UK or uh, the EU will not help you in this. You need to have the hard data. And like uh, we had problems with this. We had huge problems with this. And uh, uh, I was working in the Ministry of Culture when we created the first cultural strategy. And from that time, my dream was to have the data, to, to have something to ground our work on, to have the evidence. And uh, you know what was 
one of the main challenges for us. We could not persuade even like decision makers from our field that the investment in mapping of the sector was important. So after several years of uh, uh, trials, we just uh, tried to pivot. Uh, and to seek international support for creating uh, uh, research. And we thought that this could serve as a uh, grounding stone, as a, a game changer, and uh, we could create like some kind of baseline and data with international support, and then like uh, uh, other areas would follow. So uh, we managed to uh, uh, gain the uh, first ever grant for Georgia uh, from UNESCO International Fund for Cultural Diversity. This was a huge success for us, and the main pillar of the project is to create uh, the creative economy baseline research that we did, that I'm presenting right now. And based on this uh, uh, creative economy research, we uh, will create the creative economy strategy, national strategy for creative economy. So the first pillar is already fulfilled. We have presented the document like three weeks ago, Finally, so yeah, like um, UNESCO helped us a lot in this direction. And the process was not easy, really not easy. And especially if you imagine that, like, my dream, the dream of the colleagues of mine was to have the data. So we were so, we, we had a great appetite to grasp as much data and information as we could. So we, we made a uh, research design, so it, it incorporated these four, like, four areas. So basically it was like four different research projects incorporated into one. So like, uh, it was a really extensive uh, uh, process. And uh, it involves like overall overview of the sector, like uh, uh, about the policies, about the uh, financial finances, about the uh, framework, legal framework. Then was the uh, analysis of economic indicators. That was what we really, really very much needed. And then separate qualitative analysis throughout the whole country, in all the regions of Georgia, discussing and collecting information about the challenges and needs of the sector. And then the fourth pillar was uh, internationalization. To, uh, to know what is happening in, in this regard, to know what are the challenges for uh, creative companies in Georgia who want to export their creative services or products. So uh, just briefly about the process, we started from the basics. We started from the scratch. So we created a classification of uh, creative industries for Georgia based on the NACE codes. These are the uh, statistical classification system for create, uh, economic activities. Then it has been followed by classification for creative professional programs based on ESCO, that is also like international standard classification of occupations, and followed by classification of uh, creative products, creative services, because we did not have anything. So I will not like uh, you see uh, the process on the slide, I'll just say that it was a really extensive process. Like we elaborated a lot of like uh, information and data that you see on the slide. And uh, yeah, I'll just now try to briefly present the uh, main uh, uh, data. So one out of 11 employed people in Georgia are employed by creative economy. It's around 9% of the workforce. So it is quite important. And uh, and consider that even though like we put a lot of energy in this research even though like different researchers worked on that we could not like uh, fully and comprehensively uh, depict the sector so we we still have some kind of blind spot, blind spot. So we could not uh, describe everything. And uh, um, still, like, the, uh, the percentage uh, is high, as you see. And the main economic indicators, the gross value added of the sector is around 4%, uh, and yearly growth rate is 9%. Like, uh, production <coughs> export rate is around 12%, uh, around 12 and service export rate is 27%, um, uh, yearly growth rate, I mean. <coughs> and the largest subsectors, like, by turnover, is advertising and by employment is architecture. But if we look at, as, uh, at the growth rates, film and video is speaking. It's like really growing like uh, excessively and fashion design is the uh, most developed exporter and the growth rate is also really high as you see and digital tech industry is the biggest service exporter and the average growth rate in service export is really high as well. So uh, challenges and needs, just the, 
Some of the challenges that I mentioned before are still, to some extent, problem right now as well. It's like skills and education, like awareness. It's it's better situation regarding awareness, but still, it's a problem right now. The one of the main important problems is that we don't have any kind of like legislative mechanisms or tax incentives for investing in culture. Uh, the only case we have it's uh, for the cash rebate program for film producing. So this is the only thing, and the the funding is really scarce in this field, and the lack of creative space. Is, though we have huge potential by uh, old like industrial buildings and cultural houses. And uh, I will just uh, talk about the strategy. Uh, we, we started working on the strategy, and this topic has been discussed several times today, that it, uh, creative industries are like uh, interdisciplinary by the essence. So we want this strategy to be interdisciplinary. We, we don't want like only Ministry of Culture or Ministry of Economy to work on that. So this is our approach. We want to unite all the different like stakeholders in this process. And I also wanted to mention one thing one complementary thing to this process. So when we were like wrapping up and finalizing the first baseline research, British, Con British Council helped us a lot to create the Creative Industries Research and Evidence Framework for Georgia. And uh, uh, Internet British Consultants created the document uh, with our involvement. And the main goal of this was to, to map the gaps in research of creative industries and to devise the action plan, what needs to be done in the future in terms of research. And this action plan will be incorporated in the creative economy strategy that I've just mentioned. Okay, and that's it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I was quite quick, well, I think. First of all, as the moderator, I, I want to thank you for keeping to time. Actually, you have one minute left. I so tried a lot. Thank yeah, you. <laughs> if you want us to sit in silence for one minute. No, of course, that's a joke because we have two more speakers. I have some questions for you, but maybe, again, a reminder for our audience. If you have questions, go to slido.com. Uh, you know how to do it uh, by now, I guess. And then don't forget to like the questions that you find helpful so that we can direct them. Uh, to our audience, to, to our speakers here. And please, as you're writing down questions, I, I guess in this context it will be easier, but uh, if you can specify who the question is directed to, that would be very helpful as well. Thanks so much, Elena, again, for this uh, informative and quick presentation. I want to turn to you now. Okay. Why don't you give us an overview, please? May I take the remote? Sorry. Yes, uh, the pointer yeah. is yeah, the here. Pointers. Thank there you. Go. Uh, I would like to in introduce myself. I am uh, Erman uh, from Başkent University, Ankara, Turkey. And uh, I am very happy to announce that I am not representing any institution, so I will talk only as a researcher or maybe uh, some kind of pessimistic person. Uh, you will see at the end, I think. Uh, first, I want to uh, warmly welcome you to the Istanbul, because I am a guest also in Istanbul. but. Uh, you are very lucky, so I am, because it's a cloudy day, and when the sky is shiny and blue, it's very uh, hard to leave Istanbul. You, you can miss the city, so it's uh, our uh, chance. Uh, first, I would like to talk about the context of the creative industries in Turkey, because uh, you need to do that, you need to uh, sell some uh, statistics on that issue. So I will tell a little uh, information. In 2000, 2008, uh, we have a, a TV series sector of 10 million export volume, and uh, right now we have 800 million dollars of export volume in that sector. So it means 80 uh, times uh, increase in uh, volume. Uh, another one is about our gaming industry. Uh, right now, Turkey has uh, in the all entrepreneurship area investments about 1.1 billion dollars and quarter of that uh, volume is uh, shared by gaming industry and I think it's a very good uh, thing to have in creative industries side. Uh, so uh, Ministry of Culture had an statistics and I would like to tell you that right now uh, as of 2018 we have 500 uh, 15, 6,000 uh, uh, bi billion, sorry, Turkish dress volume in creative industries, and it's also a tripled from 10 years period. 
So, uh, I think the numbers are not so impressive because when you uh, to, uh, think about the global economy and global creative economy context, it's not so impressive. But I think that the proportion and the increase is very important because as a creative uh, workers uh, researcher, I see a potential to have a, a creative skills development, creative skills development uh, laboratory in our country. So I will uh, try to tell you about a, a policy document, one statement from a policy document. Uh, this document is Element Development Plan of Turkey. It's the first one in the present, uh, presidential governance system in Turkey. So it says uh, we should develop creative industries entrepreneurship, and uh, we need to do that by some fundings. Uh, this plan stating needs and intent to uh, giving funds to creative industries uh, entrepreneurs. And as you see, all uh, government agencies and also some academics and researchers and also sector has some uh, effect, had some effect from that uh, one sentence. I would like to uh, tell you about that interesting story. Uh, we have lots of other uh, institutions giving that kind of uh, incentives, uh, namely the trade, uh, Ministry of Trade has a dedicated uh, branch for creative industries and giving so much uh, incentives, but they are only working for uh, established businesses, not for skills development. So we will talk about the skills development side of the policies. As you see, we have the uh, development plan and then Ministry of Culture and Tourism, Directorate General of uh, Copyright, had, uh, had prepared an university, a report on CA, uh, CI incubators, how to develop uh, creative industries entrepreneurs in our uh, unique context and then uh, developed a prepared and uh, support program on that issue. It's called uh, Future is for Young People, a Cultural Industry Support Program. And uh, after that, uh, Turkey Union of Con Chambers Community Exchange, uh, Union of Chambers Community Exchange of Turkey Creative Industries Research, Research Assembly has planned a CI summit on that uh, knowledge. Uh, so in summary, uh, a single sentence expressed in the strategic level has a set an agenda of hundreds of institutions and researchers. So it seems like a good uh, picture right now. So I will try to uh, summarize some of the projects about that picture. Uh, first one is about highly e educated people in the talent pool of the creative industries. It's for uh, digital arts and intersection of digital arts and uh, tech startups. Uh, it's owned by a uh, big, uh, one of the biggest techno parks in Turkey at 20 years of ex experience in uh, tech startups, Bilkent Cyber Park. And cyber culture is aimed at collaborating between tech startups and arts. Uh, culture is my vocation is another kind of uh, virtual incubator. It's mainly focus on technical, vocational, and lifelong learning aspect of CA education. As Aurel stated uh, before, it's a very important topic because all of the uh, content is changing rapidly. And the next one is about some professionals. It's uh, looking for the music industries, digital transformation, and how cultural pro producers, namely the musicians or technical personnel, or maybe producers, uh, need some skills to develop in this context. And the last one is for uh, raising awareness in younger populations. It's about uh, copyright and intellectual property rights. And uh, it's using a two-day long game development ateliers to uh, develop, uh, raise awareness in uh, secondary education students. Uh, I want to hold right in there because this picture seems very appropriate. It uh, seems very valid uh, because it looks like a coordinated effort to develop creative industries, talent pool, or skills. But I will surprise you with that. Uh, this is not a planned effort. This is my imagination because 
I picked uh, retrospectively all these projects from hundreds of projects. There is no uh, coordinated effort to do these things like that. Okay, and I want to uh, tell you about trends of uh, creative industries in Turkey. Uh, because we think that creative industries conce concept is a very important topic, and we, uh, in strategic level, level we uh, try to make people understand un and uh, support creative industries. But in the uh, field, in the execution, in the tactical level, we do only dispersed uh, or uh, separate implementations. Because of that, we think only Financial support, support is uh, available for the creative industries uh, skill, skill uh, development side or entrepreneurship side. So without assessing the impacts or visa, without thinking about how to or what to support, we are not researching that. Uh, only some uh, researchers try to have some uh, data on that. And as my colleague said, we are not reaching so much data uh, in that issue also. Uh, so last one is high value on creativity is uh, ongoing in Turkey everywhere. Everybody says uh, creativity is the uh, solution for our problems, but nobody thinks about how to develop creativity or how to creative process uh, uh, develops in, in, in education or any other skill development context. Uh, we tried to uh, question this issue with uh, participation of six ministries, uh, sector and uh, academic rep representatives and also some technopaths, some sectoral uh, people. And all of them, uh, all of them, we tried to understand what uh, happened in the United Kingdom, what happens in the United Kingdom as policies and their impact in the field. So we will tell uh, our authorities or policymakers these impacts are provided by that kind of uh, policies. <coughs> so we talked about that and we asked them what they think about that issues. Uh, later, uh, last slide is about my uh, own interpretation, so uh, any other institution is not responsible for that. Uh, so we need to de-fetishize uh, creative industries because we uh, use the uh, creative industries concept as an uh, excuse for uh, thinking about we are doing our responsibilities as uh, public branches. Because when we have some uh, other kind of awareness on creative industries, we need to change our way of work. So uh, what happens? Everybody says we are uh, supporting that we are uh, education that so we are very happy that we have our responsibilities fulfilled and also sector has a kind of uh, approach that uh, our, my sector namely uh, game design or namely any other uh, creative industry sector is the whole creative industry sector and uh, right now uh, the creative industries assembly under the chamber of commerce is trying to uh, change that issue so we need to transfer our discourses to policies because we are not measuring anything we are not planning or coordinating anything just right now all the mid-level uh, executives all some smart people are trying to take initiative and develop uh, as I said, some kind of, uh, sorry for my time usage, and I will uh, finish in a minute. Uh, so they are not uh, thinking about the issue as a uh, complex uh, whole, and uh, they are just thinking what I uh, support is the only way. Uh, we, we are uh, talking about intense, but everybody knows that creative economy is the future. So uh, I think uh, Turkey and the developing or uh, other countries like Turkey need to try to establish a measured way of impacts, uh, not uh, intense. So it's an uh, other interesting topic for me. And uh, uh, for last, we are only talking about the functional value of the creativity, as I said before, and uh, but we are a community that uh, is not so 
comfortable with uncertainty or also uh, is not uh, so much uh, calculated risk takers. Uh, so we need to think about that, uh, what our culture uh, makes our uh, young generations to think and act like that. Uh, and lastly, we need to, I think, uh, think about an important topic, so I will try to follow my uh, notes from there. We are seeing our world in our eyes, so we are using sensory information to decide on future of creative skills. But if we don't envision possible futures, we will hardly change the natural flow of life. So I think that the countries like Turkey, which transform through creative economy, needs sophisticated versions of concentric co circles, as creative potential of Turkey is apparent because of that, maybe you can say me and pessimist, I did not mention it or emphasize it so much. <coughs> I'm very glad to announce you that we have critical minds with realistic point of view who can develop policies through strengths and weaknesses of Turkey. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Arman Demir, Thank you. for this presentation. Now I want to turn to you, Raja. Please, Thank you. please tell us about Serbia, pointer. and I will hand you yeah. the pointer. <coughs> Thank you. So thanks a lot. Thank you for the invitation. And it's great to see uh, some of the people I've been collaborating with on different projects, um, uh, both in Turkey and in the Balkans in, in the past. Uh, so I'm representing uh, Serbian Games Association here today, but <coughs> part of my uh, talk will actually be kind of a... Uh, a bit of personal history that will kind of lead into the main uh, topic. Uh, so I've been active as a cultural worker or cul cultural professional since 1999 or 2000. And um, mostly my background was in music, music events, uh, radio, um, organizing parties, being active as a DJ and musician. Uh, then later on with uh, different colleagues uh, working on um, other sorts of festivals, uh, focusing on also contemporary music, um, then uh, working on events that are related to children's uh, creativity, uh, video art, um, and um, I was always working uh, with many different actors in Serbia and from abroad and in a variety of venues in Belgrade, uh, the region, and uh, so on. Uh, then, um, while still working with music, uh, I started curating um, uh, visual arts, exhibitions, uh, working with some DIY collectives on publications, on uh, silk screen printing, organizing residencies, um, design-related exhibitions, uh, things related to street art, and so on. So. Uh, just um, mentioning all this is not about uh, showing off or anything, but um, I want to kind of explain the scope of the and the type of projects I was involved in, and uh, that kind of uh, led me uh, to the work I'm doing today and how, in a way, uh, it is connected. Uh, among them, we also did some, uh, let's say, nomadic projects, uh, learned a bit about life on the road, um, and at some point, um, this is the image of one of the last uh, editions of, of uh, the festival we were doing in Belgrade. Um, it was kind of also important to let go and to open a, a, a space for a new phase. And uh, as I was uh, credited for this event also as the co-founder of Nova Iskra, uh, this is a project we started in 2012 in Belgrade. It was the first creative hub in the Balkans and definitely in Serbia. Um, started as a co-working space, but we also expanded um, very fast into doing uh, projects, uh, into doing lots of capacity building and uh, programming. So at the moment, Nova Iskra is running three uh, separate venues uh, in Belgrade uh, that are, of course, with the uh, recent um, uh, tendencies uh, fully booked and um, there is a lot of creative entrepreneurs that are working out of these spaces. I also had the opportunity to um, work internationally on conferences and to, I was, I would say, lucky enough to be uh, part of the formation of the European Creative Hubs Network uh, together uh, with also some uh, colleagues from, from Istanbul, from uh, Atolje. Um, so then again, uh, in the end, we also even worked on 
such projects as a design brand from Nova Iskra. So the point is that moving from a kind of a cultural um, activism and uh, cultural activity to entrepreneurship. And then at some point, um, again, um, I needed a sort of a change. And kind of this brought me to working within the games industry. But what I wanted to kind of highlight in the middle of this story is this transition from culture over entrepreneurship to something we call creative industries. And as a kind of a note or maybe a proposal for some other uh, a talk by somebody uh, somewhere is that I realized that many of my colleagues, especially from the cultural domain, uh, usually put these, um, uh, these kind of relationships between um, uh, these, uh, these topics. So a lot of the artists and cultural workers, they kind of fear the um, uh, notion of industry or the notion of you know, market-oriented um, uh, projects or um, um, something that is more entrepreneurial. So definitely I'm, uh, I would uh, call on someone to, uh, to devise a kind of an in-depth research of why that is, because my feeling all along uh, was and still is that I'm doing the same type of uh, job and that I'm kind of uh, true to my dedication to creativity and the process of creation and to creating uh, spaces for artists and creatives to uh, kind of create new work, collaborate and create new values. So basically two years ago, um, after making a, a, a bit of a break from uh, my day job at Nova Iskra, I saw a job ad from the SGA, the association I'm working with now, and I kind of entered the gaming domain um, um, fully aware that uh, I'm not a gamer, I'm not, as a user, passionate about games, but I recognized that within what the association was looking for, um, I could kind of uh, do a good job and that all of this experience that I kind of ran through over the last minutes um, would be useful uh, for what the association has in mind. So basically, as the title of, of, of the presentation is highlighting, um, gaming is not just an industry, but it is also a culture and a cultural technique of the 21st century, probably the most um, authentic one in a way, uh, because the new generations are learning, um, living, communicating uh, through play and through uh, playing games. And probably the pandemic was also uh, something that uh, kind of demonstrated that in a big way. So the industry as such, you probably know some of this data is really huge, bigger than the film and music industry together by uh, several times. And it's a whole world in itself. So there are different kinds of players, different kinds of games, different genres, something that we call, that we call also serious games. And there's a lot of misconceptions like that this is something that's for kids, while most of the gamers globally are between 35 and 45 uh, years old, and uh, half of them are uh, female. So this is something that most of the people uh, who are not looking for this data will probably never guess. And then eventually something that I realized after maybe six months or so um, um, of working with my, my colleagues from the gaming industry that I really see it as the most multidisciplinary uh, or transdisciplinary um, um, creative industry. So we have everything in there from the humanities, uh, through arts, um, uh, science, uh, technology, um, and of course uh, business, everything is kind of intersecting if you want to create a successful or a high quality uh, game. So, now to move on very fast, uh, specifically into what the SGA is doing. Uh, it was founded in 2018, started with eight founding companies. Today we are close to, I think, already 130 members, uh, which is everything on from like one-man shows, studios, um, towards companies that have 150 or more employees. Um, some of these companies are also over the last few years acquired by the uh, more um, uh, bigger uh, global players. Of course, our industry is relatively young if compared to you know, what we have in France, the UK uh, or uh, Germany, uh, but we have a really big and steady growth uh, over the last years. 
We have a huge network of partners and support supporters. Without them, uh, we wouldn't be able to do uh, what we are doing. And we're also part of two main uh, European networks. So uh, this is very high on our agenda to connect our industry uh, with, our, with the peers from, uh, from other countries who have much more experience than, than us. On the other hand, we are very much community-based. Uh, we use uh, Discord and other channels to connect either with people who are already professionally engaged uh, in the industry or with those who want to enter it. Um, we are also now, next year, going to be working on our fifth annual report, uh, which is uh, really a big deal for us because it's probably the most cited uh, document, uh, at least in Serbia, when it comes to our industry. It basically attracts the attention of the general public, of the press, also of policy makers and decision makers. So all of these documents are available on our uh, website. We highlight uh, different parts uh, of the industry. Uh, then we also work on tailor-made programs. Uh, they are on one hand uh, dedicated to our members, companies and studios, but also to individuals who want to enter the industry. RGA Empowers is a program um, um, dedicated to female creators because Serbia is surprisingly number one in Europe when it comes to the gender balance within the industry. So we have around 30% of um, uh, women employed in our uh, studios. Then we are running an international program called Playing Narratives. We have a regular uh, meet, meet, meetings, uh, larger scale meetings of our members, a mentorship program, program that is entering its fourth cycle. And then we also uh, put together one-off meetups and game jams that deal with uh, specific topics like uh, funding, like game production, soft skills, and so on. Uh, what we're also running on our website is the SGA Jobs platform. So we are aggregating all the open positions for jobs within the gaming industry. Uh, so we want to have kind of a one-stop one shop uh, for everybody who are looking for a job. And another platform that we'll be launching next year is called Shift to Games, and it is dedicated to demystifying the different professions within gaming. So we're going to do that through another web platform, but also workshops, uh, creative tech job fair, and some uh, TV formats. Um, this spring, we also uh, launched our first international conference, mm -hmm. which has a stakeholder and a B2B um, aspect, and it was pretty successful with around uh, 200 delegates from across Europe and uh, different types of program. And uh, eventually, um, something that is this year central to our activities is the Creative Tech Serbia Supercluster, which is a, let's say, parallel uh, program or a project mm -hmm. that we are spearheading that goes beyond the gaming industry and uh, kind of uh, aims at everybody uh, involved in the so-called creative tech domain. So it can be also people in the film industry, in the, let's say, digital product development and so on. Uh, we also work closely with uh, universities and faculties, with all the educational institutions doing something in relation to gaming. And as I also mentioned, uh, pretty strong uh, online presence is uh, very important for us. So uh, in a way, maybe you don't care. Maybe you ask yourself how we <laughs> managed to do uh, so much. And I would just highlight for the end a couple of uh, key things. So we are a completely independent organization, um, registered as an NGO with a huge network of partners. We have um, the so-called ecosystem approach, and we don't have any direct support from the state. In a country like Serbia, we find this very important um, uh, for the sake of the integrity of the organization. Uh, we are more and more internationally recognized, community-oriented. Uh, we have um, a clear mission and an engaged uh, membership. And eventually, we have a super great team of uh, five people who are uh, working um, uh, full time on all of this. So thanks for your patience and uh, get in touch if you would like to know more. Thank you, Ralja. Uh, for um, talking us through, um, you know, gaming industry and your work in Serbia. Now, it's time for Q and A. Um, the questions are up there, I believe. Now, uh, the most popular question uh, is to you, Eleni. The second one. Yes. Yeah. Can okay. you elaborate the semi-governmental 
status of sorry my eyes are <laughs> yeah I, I understand the question like I can okay I'm answer. sorry but so how, how do you f fund yourself and sustain yourself that was the question right so yeah, the, exactly how yeah, do you yeah semi-governmental like the official legal name is legal entity of public law we are within the structure of the ministry of culture uh, sport and youth but we are like partially independent we we it's a separate organization still. And we have some funds from the government from year to year, but we have to fundraise. So we work with the UNESCO, European Union, British Council, and different organizations to like uh, draw the funds to like different projects we are doing because like government funds still are very scarce. So we have to year by year just try and uh, raise more funds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah. And I do you find this to be the ideal format for you? Uh, I wouldn't say that more government funds would be not good because we want to, uh, actually our plan is to increase, like, we have some kind of small scale uh, funding for creative initiatives. We, we have the competitions, like open competitions for creative industries and we want the budget for this to increase from the government as well. As well. But uh, uh, it's really good also to work with international organizations uh, because along with funding, uh, the experience comes, the knowledge comes, so it helps us a lot in, because like creative industries endeavor is not like well established in Georgia still so it helps a lot it's a great mm -hmm. experience for us I mean Ralja I guess in your presentation you said that uh, you are not are you getting any state funding I'm sorry I don't want to make with a the mistake, SGA no not directly um, because you said that it would affect your integrity yeah in mm -hmm. the current uh, state of affairs in Serbia definitely but on the other hand we are not we are kind of at arm's length you know with the uh, state institutions so basically we avoid working directly let's say with the government uh, but we are working with uh, different um, uh, with different bodies that are under the ministries like um, innovation fund of serbia that has uh, many funding schemes uh, especially for startups which also gaming companies usually fall under that uh, categories um, and there is no specific uh, let's say funding for the gaming industry so what we are doing is usually trying to promote all these opportunities to our members um, so, you know, uh, for them n n not to miss it. Um, on the other hand, we are always, uh, you know, attending meetings, conferences, whenever we are, uh, let's say, invited. But being kind of in this um, um, uh, industry, you know, which is pretty uh, strong, it also helps uh, maintaining your integrity because um, uh, in a way with the support of companies that are involved in the sector it's uh, easier to achieve uh, financial sustainability for the organization and for all the programs that, that mm -hmm. we are running. Also we are um, um, you know uh, working with public funds, we are uh, one of the projects is founded by USAID, we plan to apply for Creative Europe uh, projects and so on. So we are kind of, um, you know, um, very diverse when it comes to uh, modes of operation. Okay. Now, um, I guess there is another question for you, um, Elena. Now that Creative Georgia has their data, uh, what are their uh -huh. priorities? What mechanisms will they use for implementation? Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the question. The answer is the strategy. So I can like answer directly right now because we're in the process of elaborating a strategy and we have to like. Uh, use the data we already have and we also have to discuss everything with different stakeholders but definitely we will work more on developing uh, entrepreneurship related skills business skills digital skills because in Georgia we always say that we are we are really creative people we have a really huge creative potential but this potential to transform into economic output we need like uh, business skills and digital skills so we'll be definitely working into that direction but strategy will answer that question better <laughs> okay. okay, now uh, there is another question. What do the panel think is a secret of uh, good data? I want to turn to you, Armand, for this. And if you want to come in later, any of you, okay. that Thank would be you. appreciated. Uh, I can uh, talk about uh, the digitalization of music industry in Turkey uh, project. Uh, as we see, uh, industry uh, participants uh, told that when you digitalize a uh, sector, it's very good for the uh, data, producing data. But also, uh, there's a curse in that because digitalization has uh, 
makes the big uh, players into the uh, game. Uh, so big platforms or uh, uh, global uh, companies has the data, so you cannot easily access to that data. But I think uh, as the black market, uh, diminishing the black market, or maybe uh, clustering, or uh, quantifiable uh, data producing uh, quantifiable data, data. I think uh, digitalization is the uh, most key issue in uh, providing more data for our uh, creative industries uh, sectors. Any notes on that? Any of you? If not, then I want to get another question. And um, you know, for the sake of you know, keeping the time, I will have to cut it a little shorter this time. Um, Simai Dinch says, congrats on your uh, women empowerment program in gaming industry. Um, could you please share one of uh, the tailor-made program on that? OK. So as you may know, this is especially sensitive question for the gaming industry because it is uh, infamous, let's say, for its mm -hmm. uh, bro culture. And the, the, there have been numerous, uh, let's say, Me Too-related uh, scandals in some of the bigger uh, global companies over the past years. Um, but uh, what, so we are doing it kind of continuously, um, uh, supporting our ladies in terms of uh, when we organize programs, uh, we uh, try to to have you know close to one half of the participants um, uh, being uh, uh, women or also uh, you know. Um, uh, other, let's say, minority groups, we are very uh, inclusive and open in that sense. And then every March we have a specific program that I mentioned, SGA Empowers. We, we choose one day where uh, we organize um, a set of activities. So it basically starts with uh, some workshops for high school girls, uh, students in game design. Uh, then in the middle of the afternoon we have um, a kind of a master class for ladies who are already working um, in our gaming companies and usually uh, we have a more experienced uh, coaches uh, uh, coming um, uh, from, from abroad as well or from the region and then in the evening we kind of present it all together and organize a panel uh, with a couple of um, representatives of uh, ladies working in the um, uh, in in the Serbian uh, game dev companies. What we are also planning to do, uh, together with the European network EGDF, is also to devise a project, um, um, especially focused on diversity um, on a European level. And we are hopefully going to work with the Women in Games organization that has its ambassadors. Um, all around Europe, including uh, Serbia as well, and uh, Maria Ilic, our, uh, yeah, our uh, president of the board is also a, a, a lady. Uh, she's also Women in Games uh, ambassador. So these are just some of the activities, and we are definitely going to continue to uh, pursue this path. Okay. Do you have any final notes? Uh, I just shortly can answer one question. Yes, when we uh, we included textile industry when we were researching the fas fashion design sector. So yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> May I answer the question? The last question. I um, think is yes. Point for me. Yes, uh, please. Yes. Uh, firstly, it's not about it's my interpre interpretation in uh, current situation of Turkey, not about idealistic situation on cre creative industries. I think uh, research and development is also very important for creative industries. And I want to emphasize that, uh, as, as an example, United Kingdom has an uh, arts and humanities research council has a uh, separate department for creative industries, if um, I am not wrong, uh, and funding research on that area. But in Turkey, we think like that, creative industries or creative economy is a good thing, so we don't need to research anything, any uh, other uh, topics in that area. We just need to support and we, that we just need to provide finances for the uh, right institutions so they will provide the uh, right entrepreneurship. I, I just want to emphasize that. So we need in our country or any other country trying to uh, develop creative economy in their, their context, we need to first understand what is needed in our context, which skills or which uh, good areas or which, which weak, weak areas. So we need to research that. I try to emphasize that. 
I, I know it's very important for creative industries. Okay, thank you for thank this you. and thank you for all the questions. Uh, again, as I said, um, we need to uh, be super punctual at this point. So I would like to say that I guess all, all of our three um, speakers here presented a quite nuanced picture for uh, their own um, countries. I guess you said that it would be a very pessimistic picture, but yes. <laughs> I see it's uh, I see it as more nuanced. I guess. Um, Thank you. I mean, let's start with my notes for you. I guess you said that the increase is quite impressive. However, uh, the um, the general picture is not as impressive as the increase in the creative economies, if I'm not mistaken. No, general picture is very, very, very impressive, but it's uh, made by Osmos, it's not by ourselves. We do not uh, set any objectives and work through, towards that objective. Mm -hmm. It's happening by the sector only. Uh, and policymakers, if we, are to, if we are talking on policy making issues in that panel, uh, policymakers, I don't think if they have any uh, kind of effect on that uh, success. It's very limited, I think. That is definitely a room for growth, in your opinion, for yes, Turkish creative I, industries. I, and I you said it. that more attention on research should uh, yes. be uh, put. And you know, we definitely have little um, uh, attention on impact, you yes. said. And more on intention uh, is perhaps a good point to make here. And. Um, you said that we need to defetishize yes. creative industries, which was an interesting point. Yes. And um, yeah, maybe you to say uh, maybe uh, maybe some people are not familiar with the uh, 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 concept, but it's a social sciences concept that uh, if you use a part uh, instead of a whole, it means that you are fetishizing, fetishizing that. And creative industry is very suitable for for that approach. If you are in one sector, you can assume that your sector is the creative industries. But it's not very good for skill development because uh, technologies are uh, converging and also uh, skills are very agile. Mm -hmm. uh, the people uh, try to develop their skills through other sectors. And we, if we think all uh, areas in their separate uh, moments or their separate uh, uh, places, so we cannot uh, develop uh, skills in the creative industries. I try to state that. Mm -hmm. so Whereas for Elena, for uh, Georgia, uh, you said that you have a vibrant and diverse creative um, atmosphere in the mm -hmm. country, and you have a rich tradition of creativity uh, in in your um, geography. However, there is lack of planning, lack of network, and a lack of awareness for the potential of creative industries. And um, you said that data is uh, the first step. I mean, yeah. yeah, like data was the first step. And finally, we, we did this so one month Although ago. Although there is still room for yeah, growth for course, that as well. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, and when it comes to Georgia, I guess it's advertising and fashion are the Advertising and architectural are the largest industries. Architecture. But fastest growing are film and video. And actually, I just wanted to say that uh, the government program, cash rebate program, helped a lot to uh, film and industry sector to grow because mm -hmm. like lots of different international co-productions uh, uh, have been uh, happening in Georgia. And uh, yeah, this mm -hmm. was a classic case of like government support, like influencing the increase of the industry. And fashion design, in product in exports. Yeah, it's for it's exports. Yeah, I guess. Yep. Um, whereas in, I think, Serbia, it is the gaming industry that is in highlight. And you, uh, Ralia, you, Ralia, I'm sorry, yeah. I said Ralja a few times, but now I realize it's Ralia. Uh, you mentioned the importance of transition from culture, entrepreneurship to creative industries. And um, you also said that artists and people perhaps speaking as a journalist here as well, uh, fear the notion of creative industries rather than creativity or some other usage of the, of the term, I guess. So uh, that was an interesting note for me. And of course, uh, the finding out that gender balance, for gender balance in the gaming industry, Serbia holds the first spot with 35%. Yeah. 30%, but probably also because our, our industry is relatively small. I mean, it would be very hard in Germany or France probably to reach uh, this percentage because the number of employees is 
uh, way higher. We have around two and a half thousand people working in the industry. But wh what I mm -hmm. would highlight is actually the, the previous thing and, and what the colleague mentioned is this also like a relationship between the part and the whole. So uh, we have this issue even in, within the gaming industry uh, that some of the data that we are presenting in our report, and this needs to be taken into account when you are reading it, um, that maybe if we say 125 million euro is the annual turnover of, of the industry, it might be that there are actually two companies maybe um, uh, you know pushing 30% uh, mm -hmm. of, of that total okay. so that is also one thing that that can kind of uh, be misleading and then the other prob problem we have when we kind of zoom out is this uh, kind of semantic uh, trap of uh, you know creative industries culture and so on because uh, different also let's say players in the ecosystem are uh, using they have their now, different, of course. Yeah, they are using now the notion of yes. creative industries Absolutely. for you know different needs, and I think for a lot of people it's very confusing, and yes. I think this is pretty unfortunate. I can, yeah, yeah I, I, I am definitely a witness to that. So, um, thanks so much for uh, your presentations and for your questions. I guess this will be it for this session. We're going to give a very short break, a comfort break, and then we'll be back with our final and fourth session. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much.